If you watch Ancient Apocalypse, there's no way you'll have forgotten the 25,000-year-old pyramid from Indonesia, Ganong Padang, and Dr. Hilman Nadi Wajaja discussing the evidence he'd found for it. And if you've seen the skeptics and their positions on it, the first thing they'll point out is he didn't publish that in the peer-reviewed journal, and then they'll point out that the evidence he did provide doesn't show any evidence of humans, it just shows datable material in those layers. Well, I'm happy to report Dr. Nadi Wajaja did, in fact, publish his findings in a peer-reviewed journal, and we're going to go through it now and take a look and see if it does show any evidence for human intervention on any of these layers or not. Hi, I'm Dan, and welcome to Debunking. No discussion of Ganong Padang being older than previously thought can really be had without addressing the elephant in the room. There's a huge issue of nationalism and Atlantis hunting intertwined in Indonesia right now. It's been a matter of national pride with recent country leaders endorsing the idea and pushing heavily for the excavation of places like Ganong Padang to the point where it's kind of done haphazardly at places as we'll discuss. The idea of Indonesia being Atlantis or some equally legendary civilization has definitely had a lot of influence on this stuff. But that doesn't preclude the idea of Gidong Padang being around for a very long time. It just means that we have to take that into account when we're looking at this paper, that Indonesia and indeed Dr. Nadi Wajaja himself uh, are Atlantis hunters. Scientists are not immune to bias. If you watch this channel, you're more than well aware of that. And just like this channel, that can go both ways. Now, section 2.1 confirms that this is indeed the data that was discussed on Netflix. All this was gathered before that that Netflix special was aired. So this is really nice. It is it is the data that we've been talking about. And this has caused quite a buzz on uh, Twitter. A lot of people talking about this, a lot of archaeologists and geologists, and then gomers like myself. I'll link the paper down below, but I'm not going to go through all the details of all the tools and methods that he used to excavate this site. All that I'll put down below, and the experts can pick that apart as they need be. But um, he does describe the site, so we'll go through that really quickly in case you're not aware of Ganong Padang. The landscape of Ganong Padang reveals an isolated and elongated hill oriented south-north with symmetrical and flat east and west flanks. The hilltop is characterized by a flat truncated surface adorned with stone terraces embellished with standing stones known as meniers. The majestic amphitheater-like structure faces northward, offering a captivated view of the Gered Volcano Complex. Water streams encircle the perimeter of the mound that eventually merge with the Semigo River, the principal branch of this other river. The surrounding higher mountainous ridges exhibit advanced erosions, resulting in rough terrains with streams eroding the slopes. This terrain landscape, characterized by intense erosion, is typical of the region's rock formation. In contrast, the upper degree of Ganong Padang displays a remarkably smooth surface, indicating a lesser degree of erosion. This observation provides an initial clue that Ganong Padang is a more recent feature than the surrounding landscapes. He finishes this section in a manner that I feel I need to point out isn't very scientific in my opinion. It's the kind of thing that I don't think belongs in these kinds of papers, whether they're talking about the ancientness of Ganong Padang or whether it's a bunch of scientists trying to tear apart the Younger Dryas impact hypothesis. It's just too heavily opinionated. A comparative example of stone terraces is Labak Sibidug, a stepped pyramid close to Ganong Padang, which shares a similar size in antiquity, but is not yet extensively studied. Another example is Kandi Kethik in central Java. Stone terraces constructions can be found worldwide, such as Machu Picchu in Peru, built by the Inca civilization. Nan Madal, a megalithic complex on Pompeii Island, Micronesia, utilizes a similar columnar joint rocks. Interestingly, based on oral traditions, the Satellaire dynasty, the newcomers to Pompeii Island, is believed to have constructed the Namadal. The pronunciation of Satellar is remarkably similar to the Sundalese word Satellar, meaning one family in the local language of West Java, which is significant considering Ganong Padang's location. Some columnar rock arrangements observed in Ganong Padang resemble those found at Namadal. Now see, this is just leading the reader, and I wouldn't be surprised to see that in newspapers or from a YouTuber or something like that, but from a scientific paper, I expect better, man. I'm sorry. I expect you to be more neutral and more above the board. Like, your target audience is, generally speaking, scientists from the same discipline, right? So your data should carry the day. If you need to explain to somebody what your data means, then you're either, like, targeting the wrong group of people... Or maybe you're making more of an argument and providing less data. I'm just, just saying, I, I'm not a scientist, but that's just how that comes across to me. Now, before I go into what I personally think is the best evidence for Ganong Padang being older than previously thought, I need to make a quick announcement here. You might be wondering why I haven't made Fingerprints of the Gods Part 3 review just yet. And the reason is, as I go through it, I keep finding that I need more and more books. that I, there's, I can't find them online. Up until now, I've been able to get most of the stuff on PDF form. 
I'm finding books that aren't available on PDF form and that aren't available in the library. And some of them are like 20, 25 bucks. So I bought this guy um, and I'm going to buy some more. And so I was like, okay, fine. I'm going to go ahead and start a Patreon. And rather than be standing out here with a tin cup out saying, please give me money to buy books, I figured I would provide some exclusive content. So I've already uploaded one video. It's talking about these enigmatic stone tower things here. Um, skyscraper looking dealing with jobs. Some of you might be aware of them. If you own Heaven's Mirror, you definitely are. But um, at any rate, I'm not trying to just ask you for free money. I'm mean, at least provide some, some degree of content for it. Uh, a couple of those kinds of videos in around 10 minutes a month and a couple of shorts on there for $2 a month. There's also a $5 tier where you get to vote on next month's content to a degree on the, in the Patreon, not all my general content, sorry. So if you enjoyed the content I provide and would like to facilitate me making more or better content, then, or you just think that paying a couple of dollars a month isn't the worst deal in the world to watch me make a couple of more videos a month, um, the link's down below. I appreciate it. Really quickly, I will be offering a yearly tier on that, but I can't until I've been up for 30 days, apparently, and collected a certain amount of money. They got all these hoops. Anyway, on with the rest of the show. Okay, back to Ganong Padang. As Dr. Hillman begins to describe it in a degree of scientific detail, he talks about Unit 1, which is the basically the site that is as visible on top, and it just dates to 600 years ago or so. Unit 2 is where it starts to get kind of interesting because it's like 7,500, 8,000 years ago. So it's not so far back that it really gets crazy, but it is pretty far back compared to what we know before. Unit 2 is said to be hidden in plain sight and uses a slightly different construction plan. And you can see parts of it from the outside. And even though this is a horrible photograph, you can kind of make out this different wall right here. And Dr. Nadi Wajaja also did mention that there was some mortar in between a lot of these layers. Now, uh, assuming all of that's true, that that is kind of interesting and, and you know we, there's been people running around java for a very very long time so it, it's not it, ridiculous to assume that somebody would have stacked some rocks up and slapped some mud between them at some point eight thousand years ago that that's not getting crazy with it so this may well be evidence for the place being quite a bit older than we previously thought i mean going from 600 years ago to eight thousand years ago is a, a little bit of a jump right now, Unit 3 is next, and it dates back to a staggering 16 to 27,000 years old. So old, even archaeologists find it baffling. No, but seriously, that, that far back does invite a lot of scrutiny, and it's received a lot of scrutiny. The biggest one being, is there evidence of human interaction, or, or is it a cultural layer on this area, or is it just, just you know, dead grass? So... The evidence for human interaction, as Dr. Nadi Wajaja shows, is these, these columns here. He says are the tops of columns. He says that this is a wall. He says that this Kajong stone here is an artifact and that it was shaped by human hands and is most likely a representation, an early representation of the Kajong dagger still used in that area today. Then um, he also points out that some of the core drilling came up with like long pieces of stone and that that implied that he was coming straight down on top of pillars. Now below this we see an undated layer of volcanic rock. Inside of that there are chambers that Dr. Hillman's team found and that's caused a lot of debate since the TV show was first shown. But um, they, there's definitely chambers there. Whether they're lava tubes or whether they were shaped by human hands aren't, isn't covered in this paper. And as I mentioned before that really wouldn't change like Graham Hancock's position on a site like this that you know. Uh, or even anybody's position really on a site like this, if you think about it. If if they were building up a site like this over time, it originally being on some sort of sacred site like caves wouldn't be a crazy concept, right? So I've gone over the basic evidence that Dr. Nadi Wajaja has provided without getting too into detail about it. Again, the paper's linked down below. Now, what do the skeptics have to say? Well, one of the first things they point out is that the evidence of human interaction is, is kind of threadbare besides the structure itself. Now, units one and two, that's pretty obviously like shaped by human hands. Now, the dating on unit two, we'd like to see the, the dating on the uh, mortar, obviously. If you could date the construction of unit two a little bit better, that would be nice. But personally, I don't think that 7,500, 8,000 years ago is too terribly insane. Again, there were people running around in that region for a lot longer ago than that. One big stack of rocks isn't an insane thing. But unit three, on the other hand, now this is getting kind of sketchy. Uh, these may or may not be upright pillars. This may or may not be a rock wall. Uh, and this Kajong stone thing, I posted that on Twitter and asked some archaeologists and some uh, geologists about it. And the consensus consensus was overwhelming that that is, 
that's just that's just a regular old rock there's no signs of it being shaped by people it's unique it, it's shaped kind of cool but there's no signs of it being shaped by humans and it's not the kind of thing that geology could not produce or hasn't produced in the past it's very similar things now, Dr. Nadi with Jaja points out there's fill layers of dirt, and I didn't even mention that before because personally I think that that's really bad evidence, but he'll point out, oh, well, there's a layer of dirt here and a layer of dirt there, and that shows that these was different, like humans put that dirt there. It's fill dirt. Humans did that. To, and that's, uh, I, that's quite a stretch. Personally, I find that quite a stretch. There's a number of reasons that something like that could happen, and I, I would think that he would know that. I mean, he is a geologist. Well, the way I see it, Dr. Hillman gave us some interesting evidence here for Unit 2 being older than we previously thought. He keeps trying to push Unit 3 further back instead of trying, to, or 4 even. So instead of giving us a 7,000 year date, he's looking at 25,000 years ago. And that makes it pretty easy to dismiss his evidence for a lot of people. And he's really kind of, he missed a golden opportunity here to learn a whole lot more about the site. Because there's one more major issue here. One thing that could have been avoided and it was not. And this is the thing that it didn't just chap the archaeologist's hide. It's when I noticed it, looking at stuff too, uh, there's no, besides that Kajang stone, there's no, there's no lithics. There's, there's no, no stones. There's no beads. There's no arrowheads. There's no burnt rocks. There's no burnt bones. There's no carcasses. There's no corpses. There's nothing. And the reason is, we know the site had human occupation, so why? Why is that? Because this wasn't an archaeological expedition, despite the fact that it's being couched as an archaeological expedition. It's a fucking geological thing, man. The one archaeology that went along with the Ali Akbar dude that was on the Netflix special as well is either new to this or just sucks, because I'm a layman, and I can see that archaeologists do this thing, right? You see these pictures here of what they do? They... They, they sift dirt with screens, and the dirt comes out, and on top of the screen, you'll find arrowheads and shit like that, right? None of that happened at this site. And you know why none of that happened? It was because when they went all balls in going, we're going to dig this thing up, they tore big gash in the side of it with a bunch of people out there with shovels that were not, like, setting up any kind of, like, who cares about stratification, how deep this is? Just dig a hole, throw the dirt in a pile get down as deep as we can and like look at some rocks and <sighs> all right now i'm not an archaeologist by any stretch of the means i never even took a class on archaeology except for like some early stuff in college so i don't know anything about it besides the basic basic stuff right but i do understand that we get one shot at this, man. You, you get one shot to dig that hole in the ground. And, and when you do that, and you throw all the shit in the pile, it's done forever. That's gone. It's just, you can never redo that. You, know, you can dig next to it and do a better job. But that section's done forever. Everything there is lost. So, in my opinion, had they just, like, slowed it down a hair, brought in the proper people in this, they really could have... If what he found in that unit, too, is, is accurate, man... Did they miss a chance to find some cool shit? And do they just need to go back and do it properly anyway, making what happened there to begin with almost worthless and a little bit of an insult? Now, once again, it seems like one side in this debate is willing to put out substandard evidence and the other side is going to fixate on that substandard evidence and ignore the good evidence that actually is interesting and compelling and because they're too busy looking over there like a bull charging a red flag. Now, if you like these kinds of takes on this, where it's kind of a nonpartisan approach to this whole mess, you're in the right place. Thanks a lot. Subscribe, all that crap. Um, don't forget to check out my Patreon if that kind of thing something you're interested in. Thank you very much, and have a good night.